Got my notes, check. Pepsi, check. Sunglasses, check. Hat, check. Thick skin, check. And sources, check. Let's go. Welcome to Golden Blue Dude, everybody. This is where we cover all of college football. So if you're a college football fan, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. I call my Patreons the Shot Callers, and I can't wait to live stream some games and watch it with my Patreons and the score prediction contest. That's going to be fun. Now, if you're a West Virginia fan or a Pitt fan, you already know that the Backyard Brawl is something special. It is a special rivalry. Even when Pitt and West Virginia parted ways and went to different conferences, that rivalry should have never ever been broken up. It's one of the best rivalries in the nation. I mean, I mean, think about the other rivalries like Clemson and South Carolina, Georgia Tech, Georgia, Louisville, Kentucky. The list goes on. The teams are not in the same conference and yet they continued their rivalry. So something should have been done to where that rivalry kept going even though the teams went in different conferences. So we already know it's special. But it looks like that ESPN is recognizing that the Backyard Brawl is special as well because they have announced that college game day will be at the Backyard Brawl. Yes, and you already know that yours truly is going to be at the Backyard Brawl. This could be something special, not just for West Virginia and Pitt in the Backyard Brawl, but this could be something special for Golden Blue, dude. I'm going to get on college game day. I'm not, I might just get my sign and bring it or make another sign. I don't know, but I'm getting on college game day. It's happening. I've already made plans going to Heinz Field for the Backyard Brawl. That was done well in advance, so this wasn't something that pushed me and said, oh, now you need to go. No, I was already going. This is just icing on the cake. Now, the bad news is West Virginia is 0-2 for the visits that College Game Day made to Morgantown. They lost to LSU in Morgantown in 2011, and they lost to TCU in Morgantown in 2014. But did you hear that last part? Morgantown. This backyard brawl is not going to be in Morgantown. So that statistic doesn't matter. I'm confident. I'm very confident that West Virginia is going to win this game. Now, overall, Pitt does lead the series. 61 wins to West Virginia's 40 wins and three ties. So they lead by 21 games. But recent history, specifically since I've been born, West Virginia has had 18 wins, Pitt just nine wins and two ties. So West Virginia has actually doubled up on Pitt ever since I've been born. Man, I picked a good time to be born a West Virginia fan when it comes to backyard brawl, except for 2007. We all remember the 13 to nine. Pitt denied West Virginia a trip to the national championship and they will hold on to that forever because that's basically all that they can hold on to for right now. Unless you're really, really old and remember the 1976 national championship. Good on you for that. What about the 2022 edition of the backyard brawl? Well, let's look at last year. Pitt actually had a really good season in 2021. They went 11-3, ACC champs. They averaged 41.4 points per game. That was third in the nation and allowed 23.6 points per game, which was 42nd. Pretty good team. If West Virginia and Pitt would have played last year, Pitt would have beat West Virginia. I'm not above saying that. Pitt would have beat West Virginia. Here's what West Virginia did. 6-7 and seven last year. Averaged 25.2 points per game, 88. Dreadful offense. Allowed 23.8 points per game, 45th. So their defenses were similar. What about this year? There were big changes in the offseason. For Pitt, they lost quarterback Kenny Pickett, one of the all-time greats for Pitt. Last year, 334 for 497, that's 67.2%. Three for 4,319 yards, 47 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. But oh yeah, they lost Jordan Addison in the transfer portal, the best wide receiver in the nation. 100 receptions for 1,593 yards and 17 touchdowns. Big losses for Pitt. Now West Virginia, they had some losses as well. The biggest one was defensive lineman Hakeem Mesidor. 38 tackles, 8 for a loss, and 4.5 sacks last year. That's going to hurt, but we have excellent depth on the defense, and defense has been our strong suit. But we also lost a few players on the offense. We lost a running back, Lady Brown, 222 carries last year for 1,065 yards, 4.8 yards a carry, and 13 touchdowns. He wasn't like an all-time great West Virginia running back, but he was a pretty good running back. And we lost our leading receiver Winston Wright Jr. 63 receptions for just 688 yards and five touchdowns. That tells you just how bad our offense was. Our leading receiver didn't crack 700 yards. And trust me, Caden Prather, Bryce Ford Whedon are going to have breakout years this year because they're going to have a competent quarterback. To go along with their player losses, Pitt also lost offensive coordinator Mark Whipple to Nebraska. 
So they're breaking in a new offensive coordinator. They did gain a decent replacement at quarterback in Keenan Slovis. Asher 193 for 297. That's 65% through for 2,153 yards. 11 touchdowns, but 8 interceptions. He was bit by the interception bug. If Pitt wants any shot of repeating last year, he's got to limit those interceptions. And even Pitt fans are looking at spring practices and shaking their heads. Uh, he has not got the playbook just yet. Now, for West Virginia, we gained an actual offensive coordinator. The past three years that Neil Brown has been at West Virginia, we basically haven't had an offensive coordinator. Neil Brown tried to play the calls on the offense. That didn't work out. He handed it off to Jerry Parker, who didn't know what he was doing. But this year, we have a great offensive coordinator. Not just competent, but a great offensive coordinator in Graham Harrell. Because every time he's went to a new team, that team's average as far as points per game has gone up 8 to 10 points per game. That is massive. I'm talking about Graham Harrell. And oh yeah, we gained JT Daniels in the transfer portal who has great familiarity with Graham Harrell. One of the reasons why JT Daniels chose West Virginia. Last year he had an injury, so his year was cut short. He was 68 for 94, that's 72.3%, 722 yards, seven touchdowns, and three interceptions. But JT Daniels is officially on the Maxwell Award watch list. They keep an eye on who potentially could be the best player in the nation. But what's the difference between the Maxwell Award and the Heisman Trophy? Different voters, that's basically the difference. That's why you'll have one winner for the Heisman Trophy, and one winner on the Maxwell. Sometimes they don't agree. Sometimes they win both, sometimes they don't agree. So West Virginia picked a good year to play Pitt for the backyard bra and renew that rivalry because Pitt lost a ton from last year's team and West Virginia gained in the offseason. And yes, I mentioned some players that West Virginia lost. That's gonna hurt a little bit, but our gains far outweigh our losses. For Pitt, their losses far outweigh their gains. Yes, this is gonna be a road game, but I promise you, there's going to be 35 to 40,000 West Virginia fans strong at Heinz Field. So I'm not worried about the road environment. Pitt basically doesn't have a road environment. So I went from hoping, please, miracle happen, I need you to happen, that West Virginia could maybe somehow beat Pitt this year. And then West Virginia gained Graham Hare in the offseason. I'm like, hey, maybe West Virginia can actually pull this off. And then West Virginia gained JT Daniels, and I'm like, yeah, I th I'm pretty sure, I'm confident that West Virginia is going to pull off a close win. And then Pitt lost Jordan Addison to the transfer portal. Now I'm confident that not only West Virginia will win, but they will win comfortably. Now this is going to be a close game because it's a rivalry game. When I say comfortably, I mean 10 points or so, something like that. And I know West Virginia is an underdog right now. I think the opening line was Pitt was favored by 7. I don't worry about that. Vegas is wrong a lot. I'm confident that West Virginia will win this game, and they will win it comfortably. I'm going to say by 10 points. I'm going to call the final score 31 to 21. West Virginia triumphs over Pitt. College game day is going to be there. There's going to be celebration in Morgantown. I'm pretty excited, guys. Not going to lie. I'm pretty excited. I was already excited for the Backyard Brawl, but now that college game day is coming to the Backyard Brawl, man, my excitement is through the roof. I can't wait to get Golden Blue Dude on college game day. That's going to be awesome. Y'all let me know in the comments section how excited are you? Whether you're a West Virginia fan, a Pitt fan, or not a fan of either team, how excited are you that the Backyard our brawl is coming back and that college game day is going to be there and that golden blue dude is going to be on college game day give me your predictions of the backyard brawl in the comments section that's all i got for you for this show like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you on my next show